Hello and welcome to the second video about setting up iNav and popping it in a fixed wing. Now this is a series aimed at beginners, so I'm going to go a little bit slower than I normally would. So if you understand iNav already, then I would skip this series and watch something else. But as I mentioned in the first video, if you are new to iNav and you don't quite understand how it's all going to work, then we're going to go through it. Now last time we talked about this thing, this is the flight controller and uh, that's just a little receiver that I've bounced the radio and plugged in. Uh, we can play with that later, we don't need that for now. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to install iNav onto this little flight controller and then we can start setting it up and in the next video we can install it into the plane and finish the setup. Now at the moment I'm not really worried about connecting things and GPS's and all that goodness. The priority here is just to get iNav on here and basically configured, ready for when we do plug everything in. Now, the first thing we need to do is go onto the computer and we need to download the latest version of iNav Configurator. So if I search for iNav Configurator download, there we go, that'll take us to there. So we'll click on the first link and iNav Configurator 2.5 is the top one, that's the one we're going to go for. There's all of the supported bits and pieces, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go for iNav Configurator. I'm on Windows, but there's also versions for Mac and Linux too. So I'm going to right click on that and say Save Link As, and I'll pop it somewhere on the desktop, just so we can get to it easy. So that's going to download. It'll take a minute and if we double click on that zip file then in here is iNav Configurator. Let me drag that onto the desktop because that's what we actually need. Once that's done we can delete the zip file, we're not going to need that anymore. So here in iNav Configurator we'll click on iNav Configurator and we will start to run it. You don't have to install it, you don't have to do anything else, it's pretty easy. Now. I am going to tell the computer to run anyway. Occasionally with new programs like this, the antivirus stuff will warn you that something suspicious about it. Uh, so if you just say that's still okay, then it will run it. And here we are in iNav Configurator. Now we're gonna plug the board in for the very first time. So there's a little USB port on the flight controller. I'm just gonna plug my USB cable from the computer into it. And it appears in the drop down list, make sure we're on the right one. And then we're going to click on connect. Now, it's not letting me choose anything else because it says you need to upgrade your firmware before you can go to the config tab. If I type in version and hit enter, we can see that the uh, target that we want, the software version for this Matek F722 flight controller that we have here is, surprise surprised, Matek F722SE. However, it's an old version of iNav 2.1. So what we're gonna do is we can disconnect and we can flash it. So we're gonna go into firmware flasher. We're gonna choose the board. Remember, we've just seen that. So we want to find Matek F722SE. There it is. We're gonna choose the latest and greatest version, 251. We're going to select full chip arrays to make sure that none of the settings that are on the board are copied across because occasionally that can catch you out. We're going to click on load firmware online, that will download it from the iNav servers. And here's all the notes for it and things that you need to be aware of. And then we're going to click on flash firmware. Now. The board has gone in something called DFU mode that you can see up here in the top right hand corner. If it doesn't do this, then I'll put a link down below. Check out my Zadig video that talks about how you replace the driver so this works. Now, just let this run through. It's going to flash iNav onto the flight controller and when it's finished, we can start to configure everything up. Again, the process that we're going through here is listed in the iNav wiki. I recommend having a look at the link down at the bottom and having a good read. Now there we go, programming successful. So give it a second to reboot and then we'll click on connect. 
So this is the first time with the new version. So it is talking to it. I might have been a bit quick on my clicking of connect. Okay, well, let's press disconnect and let's just power cycle it, make sure it's completely happy. Plug it back into USB. Okay, and then click on connect. Right, here we go. So this is the first screen. It's going to ask us what kind of model we're going to put it into. We are going to go and put it into an airplane. As of the, the last version of iNav, you can also put it in things like cars and boats as well. So a uh, mini quad or airplane, and we're going to go for airplane. So now it's going to reboot, and when it comes back, as I move the little flat controller on the bench, I'm going to be able to see it moving on the screen. So that is the front. You can kind of see there's a little arrow on the flight controller. As I lift the front up, the front moves around and it's working. When it's sat on the bench, it should be more or less reading flat, which it kind of almost is. Now there's things up here. You can see it's got a gyroscope, accelerometer, the barometer that's on board that will give us height information. It's also set up for an airspeed sensor. I'm not going to install that. But what we're going to do is going to work our way down this left hand side one by one and just configure everything up. So the first thing we're going to go is to calibration. Now the accelerometers inside this little flight controller are going to need to be calibrated and this is what this is all about. So we're going to click on calibrate accelerometer. It's hard to say that three times fast. And it says place flight controller in position showed. Press calibrate button repeat for all six. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it flat on the bench and we're going to click calibrate. And we're going to put it on each side. It doesn't have to be exactly spot on. As close as you can is good. Don't move it if you can avoid it. And I'm just going to put it in each orientation. Click calibrate. And as it detects that orientation, it's going to fill in. Sometimes it can be tricky with a USB cable in, installed like this. There we go. Now, which one did I do? Did I do that one or that one? I bet I did that one. Uh, it can be tricky when you're moving it around to lose track of which one you're doing. But hopefully, upside down, so it needs to be like that. Oh, it didn't like that. And sometimes this happens if it isn't perfect. You might have to go through it a couple of times. Sometimes having a box or something that you can use to rest it on can be very, very handy just to speed this whole process up. I think it's probably moving that flight controller very slightly. There we go. That should work. There we go. So once we've done that, we're going to click save and reboot. Now the accelerometer is calibrated. Um, we don't need to do that again. That's a one-time deal. And when we put it into the plane, we will set level, but that's something else. If we now go onto the setup page again, we should see that it's reading a lot closer to zero, zero when it's sat on the bench. Now, next one then is mixer. And the mixer is the kind of craft it's going to go in. This is going to tell us where we plug in all of our servos. So airplane, multi-rotor, tricopter, rover, boat. We're going to keep it on airplane and actually flying wing is the one that we want. And you can see we're going to have to plug the servos into outputs three and four. So we're going to click load and apply and click save and reboot. Uh, until you do that, the default mixer doesn't have anything in it. So it isn't configured for any kind of model. But now we've done that, that should be better. So if I scroll down a little bit, there we go. There's uh, two motor outputs. Those are the defaults. And here we have uh, the two different servos with a mix of both uh, the elevator and the aileron pitch and roll, which is what we need for a flying wing. That's good. Outputs we'll come back to later. At the moment, the outputs are turned off, and that is what we're interested in. Uh, the outputs are one of the last things that we're going to turn on just for safety. Presets. Now, these are quite handy. There's lots of models in here, and you can kind of choose the one that is closest to the model that you already have. Now, there's nothing in here that's really close, but I may just for a guess 
it's obviously not a multi-rotor I will go with let's go with the mini drac uh, this is a nano drac I'm going to be putting it in but you know what we'll, we'll give it a shot again it'll reboot uh, we'll, we can tune the model and change the parameters once it's all set up uh, that's just going to set up the basics so we've done calibration mixer outputs presets ports now the ports in here these are the places that you can plug stuff in and it's worthwhile we can configure this up now and it's going to work now UART2 is the only one that's kind of set for anything for serial receiver and that is where we're going to plug the little receiver into in a moment when we do the receiver calibration and config now the cool thing is is and this is why I like people like Maytech on the Maytech product page underneath all this stuff in wiring and setting they have exactly how you plug everything in and you can see here that the GPS uh, they're putting it on transmit and receive TX3 and RX3. So what we'll do is in UART3, we'll set that up for that. So we'll say do it at GPS. Let's just double check if there's any other things that we need. Um, smart port can be connected to any unused uh, UART. We might add that to one of them because. I think we're probably all right because that's all we're going to do isn't it oh here we go so the video transmitter can be controlled from uh, the flight controller and this is the one that I've actually got and TX4 you can see there is actually being used for the control they so have the positive the negative and the video signal TX4 so what we'll do TX4 will say that that is going to be I'm guessing it's going to be smart audio we'll double check which means then at the moment UART 6 is not configured for anything we'll make that into smart port telemetry for the receiver that I've got we can change that later but that is how the ports can be configured and again rather than you have to kind of work this out decent flight controllers like that have good wiring diagrams really help you and it may be that we end up moving things around but I'm going to plug my GPS into UART3 I'm going to plug the control wire for the video transmitter into UART4 and I'm going to use the transmit pin from UART6 to be the smart port telemetry back to the radio now we're going to go through configuration now in configuration we are probably not going to change too much in here the only thing I'm going to remove is at the moment it has um, an airspeed sensor I'm going to get rid of that right now I'm going to leave everything else as default uh, for now uh, we could turn the GPS on at this point if we do in fact you know what we let's do that it'll appear up here but it will be red because we don't have a GPS connected um, but that would probably give us the basics I personally would permanently enable launch mode for fixed wing. That's quite a handy little thing to have. And uh, let's leave it like that for now. Save and reboot. Again, as it comes up, we're going to see that the GPS will appear at the top now because we've selected that as a sensor, but obviously we haven't plugged that in. Okay, fail safe. We are going to set it oops, to return to home because that's the way I want it to work. Lots of rebooting at this point, but again, this is kind of a one shot deal. Once you've got all this set up, then you've kind of done the hard work. Pit tuning, we're not going to touch. We will do an auto tune when it's actually flying. Uh, programming, we're not going to get into all that here. So the next thing we need to do then is going to be set up the receiver. Now I have already, if we just go into the desk, let me show you how to set up the model. Welcome to OpenTX. Now the model, as I said in the very first video, Normal doesn't have mode. to be particularly RG. complicated. So if I just go into the mixer, all we have in the mixer is my default channel order for the radio, throttle aileron, elevator rudder, a mode switch and an arming switch. That's how I've got it set up. And I've bound the radio 
to a little receiver. And this little receiver is gonna be the one that we're gonna use. Now, we can see here on the computer that we've got serial is selected, S bus is selected. If you remember, we set up UART2 as the input and we can confirm that that's the right place to plug it in because it actually shows us here. Again, just while we're in here actually, it is quite clever. See, it actually shows you all the stuff we kind of figured out down here. And also we are going to have to change the current sensor, but we can do that in a minute. But if we come into here, we need to plug the receiver into the flight controller. Now, um, I normally would kind of unplug this, but I'm just going to kind of plug it in hot. And there we are. We have all of the things moving. And as I move the sticks on the radio, you can see everything moving in here. Telemetry lost. Now, Telemetry recovered. The big problem I've got is that as I move the throttle on the radio, the roll is moving. And that's because my channel map Telemetry is wrong. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Now the Telemetry lost. <laughs> I'm going to move the radio out of the way a little bit. And, um, Telemetry recovered. This is caused by the radio being a little bit too close to the receiver, it's kind of been overwhelmed by uh, the, the volume of the signal. So, uh, set it to TAER, we're gonna click um, Save and Reboot, and as it comes back in, when we go back into the receiver tab, we should see, as I move my throttle, it's the throttle that moves, rudder is right. Now, you wanna make sure on the radio that when you stick- <laughs> Recovered. top right hand position like that on the radio when you look in here that the can the values of the main four controls are at their maximum position if it's like that then you're in a good place make sure you use the sub trims on your radio to make sure that the roll pitch and you're at 1500 take a note of which is your mode horizon switch mode. Loiter mode. Horizon and mode. which mode. is going to be your arming switch Armed. Disarmed. because we're almost set up for the first one through. So we're gonna go into modes. Now, we talked in the first video about a little bit of these arming, uh, these different modes, angle and things like that. So we're gonna set a range for arm. Now, uh, my arming switch I just saw was channel six. As I flick the, chan the switch on the radio for arming, arm. you can see the little blue thing GPS moves around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's set like that. And then for my three flight modes, horizon mode, normal mode, I'm going to have it set. I'd always recommend having some kind of manual mode for the low position for the first flight. There it is. We're going to add range channel five. As I flip my mode switch, you'll see the little blue thing. Horizon move. mode, normal mode. So I'm just going to bracket that position with there. The middle position I'm going to put in something like um, angle mode. So put in the middle. I'll move those around like that. So let's just click save. And the top loiter mode is for me GPS loiter. Where are you? Now position hold. That'll work. So we're going to have that. So that's just the three modes. Now the reason that we've got it set that way is because I like to have a manual mode so that when we start to fly, if INAV is doing something weird, I can take direct control of the model and get INAV out of the way as much as you can. Uh, I like angle because that is a self-level mode. It'll tell me whether or not I'm flying straight and level or whether we need to trim the plane a little more. And the loiter is a nice way to just test the GPS is all okay. Now, there are other things we can do in here. We can change things about how the on-screen display is all laid out. I'm not particularly bothered about doing all this yet until we get a little bit further in. I mean, I normally have my altitude on the right. I normally have my battery voltage down here. I normally have my um, satellite count. You see, you just drag everything around, really. Um, but you really need all of the... Um, pieces connected in order to get this all working properly. Uh, acro, that is my signal strength. I don't usually have that on. I usually have it at the bottom. Um, now, because we have a GPS, oh, that's one thing I want 
change in period. Let's just save that for now. Now, we might, when we come back in, need to update fonts, but we can do that later. There's only one last thing that I would do. Now, I have a file, I'll link to it in the description, that has all of the settings that I like. And what they are, is they are making the um, the maximum roll in both pitch and uh, roll at 60 degrees rather than the default 30. Small angle lets you arm in any particular orientation. Nav return to home, allow landing is never. I don't want this thing to try and land, I want it to circle overhead. Uh, it's climbed first, the return to home altitude, altitude is set to that. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these. What I'll just say, is I'm just gonna uh, copy that, and then in iNav, there you go, there you are. Go into the CLI, paste it in, and hit enter. It'll change all those things. Type in save, and then it'll reboot. And that is all the basic stuff done for the first run through. We're now ready to grab all the extra pieces for the iNav Telemetry controller. Lost. Telemetry recovered. And we will have a play with that in the next video, start plugging things together and getting it ready to fly. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.